Hello beautiful patrons. As always, it's an honor to have your ear for just a few more moments. Tonight my mind is drawn to the story that says when Alexander the Great saw the breath of his dominion, he wept for there were no more worlds to conquer. In many ways, I'm sympathetic to this story. Not that in any form I have ever been a conqueror, always more of a lover than a fighter, yet when I look back over my quote-unquote spiritual journey, it's obvious to me now that I was very much in love with the quest, conquering one piece of truth, one piece of theology, pillaging it for the value that it possessed, and then moving on to the next level or layer of truth. Maybe many of you experienced this same religious phenomenon. It would seem as if when I would discover something that I had not previously known theologically, that it would elevate me, that it would lift my consciousness, it would lift my awareness in such a way as to cause me to see almost a scarlet thread of truth from one end of the Bible to the other. Suddenly I had decoded a mystery. I had put a piece of the puzzle in place in such a way that it unlocked a door and brought me into the Holy of Holies into a place of secret knowledge and it was absolutely thrilling. The very first time that I experienced this at age 16 I truly felt as if I was lost and that I had suddenly been found. And as soon as I joined the ministry and it became my responsibility to bring these truths into the consciousness or into the hearts of other people I was somewhat lost again because no longer was I able to stand confidently on the tradition of my family, but I had to know what I knew. I had to know that I know that I know that I know. And this caused me to, once again, to have a somewhat similar sense of being lost, but not the type of lost that is in need of redemption the way that I was when I was 16, but instead of almost being lost in the sense of being on a treasure hunt and having to decode the map, interpret the map, and define my way from one landmark to the next. Being lost in this sense was not a tragedy. It was not something to be feared, but it was an experience to enjoy. I enjoyed that form of being lost and being on the quest, truly believing that I was finding a truth that was greater than what I had previously known. But maybe you've also sensed that once we intellectually and, dare I say, emotionally get to where we're at now, that our foundation is completely secular and that there is no more room within our minds for the supernatural, atheism, the secular, does not have the natural draw, the natural satisfaction that I found when I was on this other quest. Yes, like so many others, I am now able to stand out in the middle of an open field late at night and bear witness of the starry sky and allow my imagination to transport me out of this solar system and out of this corner of our galaxy and behold the grandeur, behold the volume, the vastness of this universe. And then Theoretically, I am able to grasp that there is a possibility of a universe beyond this universe and a multiverse, and it can give a twinge of awe, but not so easily and not so significantly and not so overwhelmingly 
as the experiences I had on the original quest. And sometimes, as Alexander was originally reported to have thought or said or felt, sometimes I too feel like weeping because there's no more worlds to conquer. Sad because there's no more quest. No further to go. No obvious destination beyond this life. Beyond this place and time. What's interesting is if we dig a little deeper into this story, we find that it's very possible this little quip about Alexander the Great was actually written in the 1600s and may not be true at all. People inspired by diligence for truth have dug into the past and it seems as if that the reality is found really back closer to writings of the second century. And the meaning of the story that comes from something a little closer to what may have been true is completely different. What we see is that Alexander was in a conversation with others, a philosophical conversation, talking about how infinite the worlds actually are, how many worlds there actually are or could be within the universe. And that Alexander's friends noticed that a sadness had fallen upon his countenance and when they inquired why, he said, there are so many worlds and I have not yet conquered even one. This is a total different take on this concept. This is coming at this from a completely different direction. Instead of finding a conqueror sad at the end of his journey, we find a young man saddened in the middle of his journey, realizing that he has not yet conquered the very one that he's in. So as I have admitted, atheism, the secular worldview for me, does not contain the magic, nor can it. How could it? Why should we expect that it should? It does not contain the same magic that I found within a previous quest. But instead of having the attitude that there are no more worlds to conquer, through science, through an understanding of reality itself, instead, my attitude should be, there are so many worlds and I've yet to conquer even one. So wherever you're at today, no matter where you're listening to this, remember that it only feels as if it is the end of the journey. As you make your transition, whatever that transition may be, no matter where you're coming from or where you now see yourself going, it's not the end of the story. It's always just the beginning of the story. At worst, the middle for those who can be brave.